to the fans of this episode and Zoe in general, yes, I have chosen death, thanks for telling me. Hello there, people set to internets. Yes, I'm back with another one of these videos. So as of this month, Miraculous Ladybug has officially turned six years old. Six years old. Has it really been that long? So I figured, hey, why not make a video to celebrate this anniversary by ripping apart two episodes that I've been dreading from a season that I haven't even reached yet. And in case you couldn't read the description, yes, I'm actually talking about Soul Crusher and... <laughs> So, some time ago, I talked to my friend Zeno about watching these two episodes together, just so we could suffer together and get them out of the way. Maybe have a viewing party of the sort. I told my girlfriend, Elvira Sunkvist, about it. She wanted to come. I decided to schedule it on Saturday so she can be there. And when the time came, we all sat down and ripped these episodes to shreds. There are local miracles, Ladybug and Cat Noir. Yeah, if by miracles you mean absolute disasters, then... Yeah, I would certainly agree. And as we were sitting through this episode, my friend Mr. Multiverse contacted me after seeing me, uh, vent about my insecurities after I saw his, at the time, most recent video, where he talked about how his job is just damaging him, how we... He felt lost and didn't know what to do. Side note, Multi, you weren't upsetting me. I just saw the video, I felt in the same boat, and I figured I was comfortable enough to let out some of my own insecurities. Just throwing it out there. No hard feelings. But back to the viewing party, when he asked if I wanted to call, I told him about this viewing party and asked if he wanted to be on board with it because... Well, if you happen to know anything about Mr. Multiverse, you'll know he's quite... It's fine, it's fine, it doesn't bother me, it doesn't bother me, it bothers me, it bothers me a lot! ...vocal about his dislike for Battle of the Miraculous and what they've done to Chloe. What in the almighty <laughs> was this? And while it was kind of nerve-wracking to start off, I just want to let you guys know that my heart is beating out of my chest right now. <laughs> it was pretty fun having him on board, and what was really unexpected was seeing him talk to Ellie about Finland. Finnish and Scandinavians are two different people, and if you call Finnish people Scandinavian, they f***ing stab you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for those who aren't in the know, if you don't want Finnish people to put more holes in you than you already have, DON'T CALL THEM SCANDINAVIAN! Oh wait a minute, I forgot I was reviewing two episodes, um... Yeah, to say that we were disappointed in these episodes would be the understatement of the millennium. See this, right here? This is our reaction to both of these episodes. Half wanting to die, and half wanting blood. Okay, yep, nope, this is just too much. I really should clean up. See you guys in the morning. And it's not morning, let's just cover Soul Crusher already. So in this episode, we get introduced to Chloe's half-sister, Zoe, and she's a Mary Sue. No, I'm not going to mince words. I'm not going to analyze the story just to build up to this point. She's a Mary freaking Sue, and I'm not going to pretend she isn't. And I know a lot of people are sick of that term, especially considering it's been overused at this point. Hell, I've seen some people call Marinette a Mary Sue, even one of my friends. And honestly, I don't necessarily agree with that. I mean, if Marinette was a Mary Sue, that would have to mean that she was basically flawless. And... As I'm pretty sure I've made clear, she has plenty of flaws. It's just that the show, especially as of season 3, doesn't really paint these as flaws and just says that we should roll with these flaws and still praise Marinette as if she was the greatest miraculous holder to ever exist. So for those wondering, no, I do not consider Marinette a Mary Sue. A mistake? Maybe. An unholy sin against the mere concept of human decency? Definitely. But not a Mary Sue. Zoe, on the other hand, rightfully deserves that label. Much like Luca, she's basically flawless and has no personality whatsoever. Like, seriously, what is her personality? And I'm pretty sure everyone will come at me and tell me she's a nice person. And? Like, seriously, what else does she have? Okay, to be fair, they do show her as insecure about herself and pretending to be as mean as Chloe just so she can get her and Audrey's approval and try and fit in with the rest of the bourgeois family. The problem is that we already have characters who are just as insecure, maybe even more so, and have much better development. 
Yes, even Marinette. Screw this episode for making me say that. And they don't even give her any depth. Yes, she has a tragic backstory, but it feels so vague and nonspecific, and it just feels deliberately crafted to make you feel for her. And it's so blatant with that that I honestly don't care if kids put roaches in her lockers or if everyone turned against her. But finally, I And yes, yeah, she does have an interest in acting, but the show doesn't really dive too deep into how passionate she is about her interests. Unlike other characters like Marinette, Alia, Nathaniel, Mark, and yes, freaking Luca. I mean, yeah, Kitty Section sucks, but I at least know that he cares about it. In Zoe's case, in the very first episode she's in, mind you, she says that she has an interest in acting... And then in the very next episode, she has the lead role in Thomas Asterix's movie. The only bit of depth that we get is that she loves acting so much that she ended up acting all the time, trying to play these different roles, trying to please people. Any specifics? Like, can we get actual concrete detail as to what the hell she means by this? And speaking of acting... Oh boy. I have nothing against Neen Melody as a person or as an actress. She seems like an incredibly sweet person, and hey, she even has a decent resume, including Ronnie Arabelle from Sword Art Online. Ronnie? Oh, damn it. Mario Illustrious from the 2021 dub of Rebuild of Evangelion, Pandora from ReZero, and she even voiced two Kwamis, Kalki and Mulo. And to be fair on her, she and Sayla Victor are really supportive of each other, which is pretty cool. She actually has Sayla to thank for not only finding out about Miraculous, but also being a part of it by some extent. You, like, really inspired me <laughs> so awesome. to really get into it. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so, so happy. Zoe's story. And she does have a great stand on the Chloe versus Zoe debacle, which I'll get to later. But I don't know whether to blame it on my opinion of the character or not, but whenever I hear her performance, it ranges from fine to... Deneen, please tell me you did multiple takes of that one line and they just happened to pick that one by complete accident because why would she be saying you who when leaping onto a rooftop? But back to Zoe's overall character, the thing about her being handed the lead role in a movie, the episode after she appears... Yeah, that's kind of a persistent problem. In the span of two episodes, back to back, mind you, she befriends the whole class, gets the lead role in a movie from a popular director, and not only gets to be miraculous, but knows how to use her power and use it effectively. And none of these feel built up or earned, they're just handed to her on a silver platter. And before you come at me and say, oh, she was a good person, she deserved to have all of that. Luca was a good person, Maybe even too good, and at least he had a full season before he became Viperian. And you know what? At least you could get away with saying that Luca was meant to be a wake-up call for Marinette. There are no good intentions behind Zoe's creation. She only exists to be everything that Chloe should be, but never will, and suck away any sympathy one might have for her and pass it over to Zoe. And speaking of Chloe... Your father only exists to give you everything you want whenever you want. Ugh. My god, how they've massacred her. For those who haven't seen my previous Chloe video, when Battle of the Miraculous came out, Thomas went full-blown sabotage mode and destroyed any hope Chloe ever had of being a good person and getting to be miraculous again. And honestly, in spite of this being one of the worst ideas I've ever seen in a TV show, there was still potential behind it. And while I would have loved to seen that redemption arc actually pay off, I wouldn't mind seeing Chloe in a more devious light. Maybe have her try to get back at Ladybug for what she did to her in Battle of the Miraculous. I don't care what anybody says. Any attempt to get back at Ladybug for that mistake is well deserved. Instead, she's back to her season one days, except even freaking worse. Seriously, this isn't a heel turn. This is a heel spin and blow to the gut while spitting blood in our faces. Every opportunity they have to make Chloe a hateable bitch lord, they take and roll with it. Whether it's by having her accept Hawk Moth's proposal without hesitation, Lila and Chameleon, this is not, to having her say this. 
But it hasn't been working so well ever since I became a superhero. I got too soft. I got too soft. I'm gonna kill myself. Oh, this is where hell begins. And it only gets worse the longer it goes on. I mean, for God's sakes, Chloe has Sabrina in a freaking closet doing her homework. Do you not see what is wrong with this picture? Remember when Chloe protected Sabrina in freaking Ladybug? What the hell happened? All right, I forgot. Anyways, back to the story. In order for Zoe to be an acceptable sister to her, she has to teach her to be the worst thing to ever grace humanity. And while she's good at being as bad as Chloe for the most part, when Chloe plans on putting roaches in Marinette's locker... after bringing up... Oh, get her punished for something she didn't do. Too easy. Roger cop, anybody? Zoe gets upset, as like I said before, she had roaches put in her locker when she was back in boarding school, which is enough for Hawk Moth to send an Akuma to turn her into Style Queen. I mean Soul Crusher. Yeah, I got the two mixed up all the time, and I really have no excuse for it. But no, she doesn't turn people into gold. Instead, she uses the soles of her shoes to absorb people and grow to the size of a titan. There's a giantess fetish joke to be made, and thankfully Multi made it for us. Like, no- kind of giant Chloe, golden Chloe, and some of us are being awoken by fetishes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! As for Soul Crusher's design, it's not the worst. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but my friends seem to like it, and I could sort of understand why. It's basically the appearance of Chloe with the horns and the gold of Style Queen. Basically to say she's now exactly what Chloe and Audrey wanted her to be. And I could appreciate that... At least until Ellie said... Chloe with horns. Like, uh, Hindu... Does that mean the designers are trying to tell us that Chloe is the devil? Oh, <laughs> that's subtle as a f***ing... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh, Ellie, you just... You just took an interesting design and just made me hate it. And that's the best way I can describe this episode. The writers telling us that Chloe is the literal devil. This episode keeps trying to drive home how horrible of a person Chloe is, either by having her insult her half-sister while she's still Soul Crusher, mind you, or by having her push Marinette's parents and Marinette to Zoe just so she doesn't get Cut. They're not even trying to hide how desperate they are. And that's all I could say about this episode. It's 22 minutes of Chloe bashing and the introduction of a Mary Sue. I mean, sure, it has one funny line. Hello, Zoe. I'm Miss Walking Disaster. <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> okay. I am using that nickname from now on. But there's really not much else I could comment on. I guess finding out Andre had some dreams of being a film creator is kind of neat. In fact, I'd go as far to say that these episodes are easily Andre at his best. Which is kind of sad considering it's these episodes and not an episode in season one. Then again, this could probably be to justify how she wasn't abused according to Thomas. For the love of God, Thomas, get off of Twitter right now! But aside from that, yeah, that was the worst thing ever. However, that was only the appetizer for hell. Now for the main course of hell and a half. Queen Banana. I'm gonna turn all of Paris into bananas! That happened, and we all let it happen. I, and I'm pretty sure Zeno and Multi knew we were going to hate this episode as soon as we read that title. Hell, Multi couldn't even get past a minute without wanting to stop. Stop the ride! Stop the ride! <laughs> we're not even like a full minute in, and I'm already thinking of that Clockwork Orange segment. It's like, stop it! Stop it! Please! I beg you! Except instead of Beethoven, we get... Bullshit! And could you blame him? I mean, look at this thing! It's practically taking the name and design of Queen Bee and making a mockery out of it! And honestly, that's the best way I can describe this episode. If Soul Crusher set out to make Chloe look like the devil, this episode sets out to make Chloe look like an absolute joke. As well as the devil. And my god, does this episode do it in such an insulting, mean-spirited, and... Quite frankly, pathetic manner. Because most of the time you are a super disaster more than a superhero. Okay, time to- <laughs> No! Bull fucking shit! I am- I'm jumping off that roof. Don't! 
shit. Like that line, that godforsaken line. That I almost felt an aneurysm. <laughs> We're basically telling the whole world to kids. A, not only is it okay to stalk your, you know, your potential love interest and not be creepy, thanks, we just got over that from, you know, fucking Twilight, and B, it's now okay to make fun of, you know, mentally abused victims. Because, yeah, for all intents and purposes, Chloe's mentally ill. Not only do we have Chloe trying to keep her sister from being the lead in a movie Thomas Astruck is directing. Because of course he is! But we basically have her ending her friendship with Adrian, which I should add isn't even legitimate according to Thomas. In a sense. Watches her own half-sister gets the Bee Miraculous without even knowing it. And get possibly the worst villain designed to date with the Senta Monster that is the worst name you could ever give to anything really and... Admittedly, one of the scariest powers when you really think about it. Could yeah. you imagine being turned into, a, like, the person being turned into a banana and, like, they they can't talk, they can't move. It's literally like Metallica 1. I, uh, I kind of imagine it's like you're, like, still fully functional, but you're just lying on the ground and hoping to God a pigeon doesn't come and pick, uh, pick you open. <laughs> you're a hungry human. What? Imagine like, some guy just coming along, eating the banana, and it's another guy. Did he, oh did he with an act of cannibalism? <laughs> what if that one guy that was eating the banana was Mr. Banana? Stay peachy! You're a banana! That's the other thing, like, that is it cannibalism still? And also, like, Double after- cannibalism! Ma Marinette, like, does the miraculous ladybug thing and just status quoios everything. Does the guy come back? Or is he still, like, digesting in the guy's stomach or, like, bust out of him like a chest buster? <laughs> or what if he was, like, only half eaten and now only half of his body remains? Like I said, pretty horrifying, but it's just a shame that it's attached to... This design of all things. Seriously, Thomas, are you really going to look at this design and say, Yes, we have better designs than the ones at Pixar. Everything about this villain form, aside from the powers, which are, again, admittedly scary, just make me hurt. Her banana hair, her skin color and yellow lips, the stinger skirt that jiggles and feels wrong, the giant gorilla that's named... Banana Boom Boom! <laughs> No, no, Nickelback's not good enough for this. And honestly, the Queen Bee replacement isn't much better. And before you say, she's not Queen Bee, she's Vesperia, I know, I know. But the episode actually disagrees with that, and I'll get to that later. First off, again, literally the episode after she appears, she gets the Miraculous and knows how to use it well. Secondly, yeah, I still hate this design. Not only can I not get behind the black bangs or the mask, not only can I not understand why they gave her more of a yellow jacket design instead of, you know, a bumblebee. These assholes stole my design, and I'm sorry. We need to die. Oh, and if this episode isn't bashing Chloe to all hell, then it's certainly out there praising Zoe as if she was the second coming of Christ. Admittedly, it's only two times that they do this, at least when she's Vesperia, but it doesn't make them any less painful to watch. Whether it's Ladybug praising her out of nowhere, This lucky charm blue is really good, and so is Vesperia, don't you think, Cat Noir? <gasps> Off. Sit on a dick! Or Plague deciding to compare her to Queen Bee as if they were two different cheeses. Sweeter, more refined, and much nicer. Shut the f*** up, you- you black- you black- Okay, wait, wait, Austin, Huntsman, maybe- maybe not start with you black twice. <laughs> Damn it, this is not about race! I apologize to the black community for that moment. But honestly, I think the worst moment has to be when Vesperia meets up with Queen Banana, who's holding Ladybug at Banana Point and is not getting her miraculous- It's been four seasons and one episode and villains are still making the exact- same mistake! Now I just want to preface with this, to the people who are trying to tell me that Zoe isn't Queen B, she's Vesperia- I have nothing against you, and if it seems like I do, then I apologize. And heading back to Deneen Melody, when on the topic of Zoe versus Chloe, she had this to say. Hi everyone, a couple of things. I just wanted to say, because this has come up a couple of times, I am not Zoe versus Chloe at all. 
so when people tag me in that sort of thing or ask me, I'm not a versus person. I am a Zoe and Chloe person. And that actually means a lot to me. So again, I and I don't like seeing them um, being, you know, put up against each other because they're sisters. And yes, there's some conflict there, but it's Zoe and Chloe or Chloe and Zoe. They're both, you know, and they're not, Zoe is not Queen Bee. She's not Queen Bee. She's Vesperia. So whenever you say there's only one Queen Bee, you're absolutely right. And I have nothing but mad respect for her for not picking sides or automatically saying Zoe is better than Chloe because she's a lot nicer. I'm glad that she's willing to view the two as just sisters. And honestly, I wish I could do the same. The problem that I have is that this episode didn't get that memo. But I am the real Queen Bee now. Ladybug chose me to defend Paris because you couldn't do it. Yeah, to all the people saying that Zoe isn't the new Queen Bee, nothing against you, but here comes this episode to say, yeah, she is the new Queen Bee. Screw Chloe, she deserves the title far more than her. I want to kill this lady. I swear to God. The only reason that this shit even happened, again, literally... What the hell, Thomas? What the hell is wrong wrong with you? You did all of this specifically because you wanted to replace, replace Chloe. And what? This one's nicer. Yeah, that could have been Chloe, you ass face. Seriously. All of that, everything that we went through, the family becoming nicer, some developments on, yeah, mom issues, the, the fact that that she realizes she doesn't have any friends. Well, all that gone, and all in favor of just having this, this fucking Mary Sue, whatever. Yeah, she gets everything. And, and what exactly did she do just to be a hero? Hey, she's only been in two episodes, and now she's a miraculous user. I'm sure you're wondering if there are any positives to this episode, and... Well, there are, but any positive I can come up with is kind of like this car right here. I mean, by itself, it's not that bad of a car, but there are too many oversized bananas that kind of ruin it, in my opinion. The only one I can sort of appreciate in spite of the bananas is, well, Queen Banana herself. Oh, no, not the villain design. I'm talking about Chloe's outfit for the movie. I mean, yes, it's basically the Queen Bee outfit with uh, a skirt and belt, some boots, and a hat. Kind of giving her a bit of a cowboy vibe. Cowgirl, damn it. But I'd be lying if I said she didn't look good in it. I mean, seriously, this could be a legit cosplay. And not to mention, Chloe with her hair down looks kind of beautiful. Not gonna lie. And again, I could sort of appreciate Andre standing up to her daughter. I just wish it wasn't in this episode in particular. Then there's a moment near the end of the episode where Zoe tells Chloe, You may hate me, but I love you. And I always will, even if the whole world hates you. Okay, putting aside the fact that this line is directly from the movie that they were shooting, when I first saw this moment... I actually kind of liked it. Really, I do. I appreciate how they tried to make her an actual sister instead of just a reminder of what Chloe should have been but never will be. And actually have her love her sister in spite of all she might say to her and the whole world hating her. But then I looked at what she said in that sentence and that's when two wires in my brain connected and I suddenly hated it. Even if the whole world hated hates you. Essentially saying, yeah, no one likes you. You've got no friends. Get bent. I mean, I'm sure this is more unintentional than, well, the rest of the Chloe bashing. It's worse than lay. That's why it suits you so well, Chloe. But still, it is kind of loaded. If they just had her say, no matter how much you hate me, I'm pretty sure they could have avoided that subtext. The whole world- Zoe, Chloe has plenty of fans, and many have made that pretty clear after Battle of the Miraculous. Some of them may go too far, and I'm not gonna defend those fans, but there are plenty of people who will reasonably defend her. And let's not forget, my friend has a crush on her in a similar vein to my crush on Lila. And then there's Chloe hating Ladybug after being humiliated. Yeah, given how I felt Chloe should have reacted to Ladybug and Antibug, in the Vanisher, out of all the moments where Chloe is the absolute worst, this is probably the most cathartic. I agree with her! 
fully siding with her villain supremacy. Who's with me? I'm with you. Same. Forever evil. Yes! Though I won't really call it an accolade. It's just me being a desperate evil bastard. The problem? Zoe gives her the miraculous charm, which means she can't be akumatized anymore, and Tiki and Marinette say this. Maybe this will help Chloe become a better person. Let's hope so, Tiki. Really? You're just going to go ahead and say that? After all that Thomas has said about Chloe, all the backlash, all the blocking, because yes, he is pretty block happy even with the most reasonable people. All the BS justifications, comparisons, and all I hope isn't real. They seriously have the nerve to tell us, wait a minute guys, she totally has a chance of being redeemed. She could be a better person. All she needs to do is just be good, even though she probably won't be given the motivation to be good and will probably use this moment to show that even without an Akuma, there is no low that Chloe won't sink to. We promise we're all on the same page. Thomas totally isn't trying to sabotage a redemption arc that we totally did not have lined up in season two that you guys were too stupid to believe was a redemption arc will this madness ever end so when conclusion i want to die i didn't think i'd find an episode that was more desperate than chameleon more spiteful than chaplon more insulting than battle of the miraculous or more arrogant than chris master and stormy weather 2 but here we are and this season gave us two of them Back to back! And in Queen Banana's case, it feels oddly spiteful towards the writers. I mean, really think about it. Thomas and the rest of the crew just wants to make a movie they want to make, and Chloe just wants to change it up to be her own fantasy. I honestly have this theory that this might be Thomas insulting the writers for making Chloe more relatable. Especially given how he and the rest of the writing team have differing viewpoints of Chloe, how she was constantly demanding to be the main hero of the film, and how the rest of the crew was just annoyed by the changes. But considering that there were three other writers and four other directors. Either my theory isn't true, nobody picked up on this, it was the other way around, or they were all on the same page. I honest to God hope that it isn't the last one on that list because that would make these episodes even worse. And speaking of worse, what makes this especially bad is that it not only sets out to ignore episodes like Zombie Zoo, Maledictator, Heroes Day, and Miracular, it also sets out to ignore Battle of the Miraculous. Oh, it still happened, Chloe still hates Ladybug because of it, but none of the consequences seem to stem from that particular event. A ton of the class saw what Chloe did, didn't they? Shouldn't they be shaming Chloe harder for that? Not to mention, if what Thomas said is anything to go by, Chloe practically solidified herself as a villain in that episode. She had an opportunity to be as devious as Lila, maybe have her try to ruin Marinette's image even more, try to get some decent payback, Marinette doesn't put up with her crap and ends up reminding her that she sided with Hawk Moth. Of course, ignoring how she caused it to happen by acting out of jealousy. I know it's an issue, but at this point, it's what I would expect from Marinette. More people stop taking her seriously or respecting her, and Adrian calls her out and probably ends their friendship because of that stunt and how much she's trying to hurt Marinette. And if she isn't going to realize she's alone again and use this opportunity to try and be a good person regardless of people forgiving her or not. Lila could probably take her under her wing and make her the next Mayura if she's going to be in the next Hawk Moth. As much as I hate what Battle of the Miraculous did to Chloe, there was still a bit of that potential to see her in a villainous light. But this? Chloe being a much worse version of her season 1 self, getting butthurt over seeing her half-sister in a movie, dropping her friendship with Adrian because of it, and turning into the Queen of Bananas? Yeah, this is why I called the attempts at making Chloe more hateable pathetic. I've been waiting to see what Chloe does to Ladybug after that mess of a finale, and all we get is this? And all of this is putting aside some of the little problems these episodes have, like the unflattering shots in Soul Crusher. This was not, this, you cannot tell me this wasn't on purpose. This, this angle. This is not a flattering angle. Or the really questionable lines in Queen Banana. You don't want to see my monkey make a banana smoothie out of your kitty. Okay, that was <laughs> Yeah, crazy. just, I'm just gonna have to put a giant nope. Uh, nope, just d giant yellow tape with a bunch of nope on it. A bunch of nope. For the longest time, I thought Frightening Gale was going to be as bad as it got. I honestly was going to consider that the worst episode of Miraculous. But after watching these two with my friends, I can say 
Hand on heart, these are the worst episodes in the series. And I can't even say this is still better than the worst of other good shows. No, this is Arnold Betrays Iggy bad. This is Everyone Knows It's Bendy bad. Maybe even A Wishful Life bad. And my friends are in the same boat. Zeno hated it. I hate it. I hate it more. More than literally any other episode, I probably like, complained about. Like, yeah! Malty hated it. Everything here on display is just the most vile, the most hate-filled, like, just vehement, like, just F you to the fans. I get, look, I get it. Asterisk, this is your show. Like, well, half your show. But, like, at the same time, Jesus, dude, this is, like, going above and beyond to <laughs> retcon everything even ellie who saw these episodes and didn't think they were bad now just hates them i have a lot of built-up anger that i'm trying to contain right now <laughs> because i didn't i've only seen these episodes like maybe once each and during those i didn't notice all of these like small details so that's probably why I didn't consider these episodes bad. But now they are painful to sit through. I cannot in good faith recommend these episodes unless you absolutely hate yourself. Which one do I think is worse? While Queen Banana might have so much more to point out, honestly, they're both on the same level of awful and deserve to burn together. I know I'm spoiling my rating and the special treatment episodes like this get, not to mention the little bit extra I'm giving to these two episodes in particular, but like I said, these episodes don't deserve to wait. They don't deserve build-up. All they deserve is to die in a fire. Chloe deserves better than this, you guys. Okay, that's it for my review of these two episodes. But before I go, I just want to add a few things to my previous Chloe video. First off, I just want to extend my apologies to the people Thomas Astruck blocked that were trying to be reasonable. Some people might deserve it. Again, I do not condone harassment. But for the people trying to critique his work or be reasonable, you didn't deserve it. And while I'm on Thomas, I completely neglected to mention this in my previous Chloe video, but I wanted to give a shout out to the immaturity of Thomas Astruck Tumblr page. This has a great number of posts calling out Thomas Astruck for his immaturity on Twitter, and even has a few reviews of Season 4 episodes, including Soul Crusher and Queen Banana, which I kinda recommend you read. This is how I found out about the abuse victim and rape apologist tweets, so yeah, if you want more of a reason to facepalm at Thomas, be sure to check it out. And before you ask, yes, I am reneging what I said about not giving Thomas a hard time. Maybe not through Twitter harassment, because again, it's wrong and but any chance I get in these videos I will throw shade at him for any writing decision or statement he makes I'm also throwing shade at Jeremy Zag any chance that I get because honestly he's no saint either and I'd rather hold both of these guys accountable instead of picking sides and to close out this video I once again have to extend my thanks to Zenoheld, Elvira Sunkovist, and Mr. Multiverse for joining me in this viewing party ripping these episodes to shreds and in Multi's case, giving me a few good laughs. Alright, I know what we need to do to stop Banana Boom Boom. Quick, get Pineapplezilla. <laughs> Pineapplezilla! Is that a close cousin of Deadpoolzilla? Oh, Deadpoolzilla's long been f***ing dead, I don't care. <laughs> it was a lot of fun having you guys on board, and I hope to do more of these in the future. In fact, as of recording, I've done another one of these viewing parties with them, as well as one of my longtime viewers, The Reviewer. Yes, that's his name, don't judge him. I decided to have him on board so we can rip apart two episodes he told me about, Reflect Doll and Kwame Buster. And if you want my opinions on those episodes, all I can really say about them is, eh, it's bad, but it could have been a whole lot worse. And this is what I'm talking about when I say it could have been a whole lot worse. Holy crap, how did this episode get made? I don't have much to show you of that viewing party right now because I'd rather wait until the season 3 marathon for me to show it. But I think I might show a moment during the Kwame Buster RP where it gets out of control and Multi and I get into a sort of 
voice chat role play. Or Why don't you ask, ask your son? Like, okay, Adrian's a total bitch. Let's not get, <laughs> let's not cross here. <laughs> oh, is that why you decided to strike him like a softball? I was teeing that motherfucker up like Tiger Woods. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, multi's a lot of fun to be around. So what did you think of Soul Crushing Pain and Queen Bastardization? Did you want to crucify these episodes as well? Or am I a dirty rotten bastard for daring to throw a display of schadenfreude into a fire pit and hosing it down with gasoline? Leave a comment in the description below and I'll be sure to read it. And I just want to apologize to the people who are waiting for my 1000 subscriber special. I've just been lacking confidence, I've been procrastinating like crazy, and I even got my wisdom teeth removed. I'll be sure to get back onto it and I might reshoot the entire thing because I am incredibly unhappy with how the footage turned out. And this hair is getting poofy and I want to shave it. So with all that said, happy six year anniversary, Miraculous. I'll remember you in therapy. You need to learn to control your anger, Chloe. You need to learn to not go after Adrian's dick! You need to learn to be a better hero. You need to learn to be a better person. You need to learn to get the f*** out of my sight. <laughs>